I had a press conference this week in which I reiterated I am prepared, eager, and anxious to do a big deal, a big package that ends this governance by crisis where every two weeks or every two months or every six months uh, we are threatening this hard-won recovery. When I hear a, a, a words like that, we're no longer going to govern by crisis, that sounds awesome. Right. That was yesterday, by the way, when he made that comment. Yeah. I, I suspect next week, though, there'll be a different response. Well, no, the fact of the matter is, I, I, let's say we are not going to have a, a big bargain, a big deal. We're not going to have the grand bargain because, you know, there, our two political parties have totally different visions of what our society should look like. And the Republicans really want to, they want to demolish Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. They are not going to accept, even if they signed on the dotted line once, they would they renege on it two years later. Is that what big deal it. means, cutting, cutting well, so-called entitlement spending? Well, what, what Obama thinks is we'll have more, more revenue at the same time we'll have cuts in entitlements, and, which is all a mistake. We, don't, we will eventually need to do more revenue. We will eventually need to rein in health care costs, but not now. We don't need to do any of that right Wait, you're now. You're saying we don't need revenue hikes either? We will eventually. But, but right not, now you're saying it. Right now. No, right now it's, I mean, I, if I can get them, I'll take them because we will need them eventually. Right. There's a, a political issue. You know, if you, you, you grab them whenever you get the can. chance. But, right. but in terms of the sheer economics, no, that's just a political point. So what Obama is doing, I hope he's doing, is he's actually just positioning himself. He's saying, I'm willing to deal in the confident knowledge that the Republicans won't deal, <laughs> right. which, you know, which, okay, if that works, fine, but the reality is we don't want to deal at all right now. We want, the right way to deal with things right now is to not do any of this, not have spending cuts, not have any immediate tax hikes. Uh, this is, you know, um, people talk about kicking the can down the road, and actually, and you're actually saying we should keep right. kicking the can. Yeah, right now, is, right now is I've really, never heard anyone say this before. Right now is a really good time to kick that can, because this is not the time to be pulling back. Wow, that's so fascinating. I, was, I had Tom Friedman here uh, a few months ago, and yeah. we talked, and even more recently, he's been issuing comments about this, and I know you all have some disagreements on this yeah. particular issue. But it seems to me that other prominent sort of voices on this are saying something very different. They're saying, that, right. they're saying that we shouldn't be kicking the can. That right, we but they're... Immediately. And look, ideally, if we had a, a political system filled with responsible adults dealing in good faith, I'd say let's stimulate the economy now, but lock in right now plans to bring the budget deficit under control, looking, right. well, if, but you know, who are we kidding? That's not the political system we have right now. Right. And if you make the, uh, the condition, being that we have to condition everything, we, we have to be austere until we can reach this long-term deal, it's not gonna happen. So right now, given the political situation, the best thing is to not worry about the deficit. Uh, there's what, what does that do? What does that do for uh, confidence, though? And I know, I know you're, you're right. big, you, you think right. I, I overstate and probably worry about the sort of uh, the, 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 the consumer confidence piece and the investor confidence piece. But I wonder if we keep kicking the can down the road and we see two sides that don't come together, oh. and the word you know sequestration is, is hovering over, just like fiscal cliff and, and all those other well, bad words are hovering over. What does that do for confidence in the global market? What does that do for confidence? Well, in the you know, there's two kinds. Uh, bond market again doesn't doesn't isn't bothered at all. So if you're worried about that kind of confidence. Uh, altogether, confidence is, is way overstated as an issue. What matters is what you do, not what people think you might do eventually. Hmm. Um, and look, um, they, all the people who are worried, you know, they said, what about Social Security and Medicare? Look at the year 2030, we might have a big problem, which is true. But why exactly do we have to deal with that problem right now? Right? You say, well, we might eventually either have to raise taxes or cut benefits. So they're saying to avoid that, what we have, need to do is right now agree that later on we will cut benefits. Why, <laughs> right, why, right, what, right. what exactly are we doing there? So this is, this is, not a, this is a, a complete misconception, or it's a hidden agenda. Right. A lot of the people, really, they really don't care about the deficit. They just want to cut Social Security. So, um, so no, this is, uh, this is not, th there is this obsession among a lot of insiders, a lot of, you know, the, that we must somehow lock in the future. And th it's, it is really weird when people who are just in the political arena talk endlessly about business confidence and the businesses and the, and the investors actually don't worry about it at all.